Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from Outer space. space. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Story number one. Humans and Honor, written by Rednall97. Zone knew what he was about to do could cost him everything. His social standing, his wealth, and even his life. But he couldn't stand by and do nothing. So he stood up and spoke. His pleading tone betraying his proud stature. M m my king, I m must ask you to reconsider your decision on the declaration of war against the United Terran Nations. The king turned towards him and spoke in a calm voice. Sit down, Soane. You may be one of my most trusted companions. I'd even call you my friend. But this is an official court meeting. Tradition demands certain consequences for speaking out against your king. And I may be king, but I can't change traditions. But Son stood firm and responded, My king, I am fully aware of what I am doing, and I know that if I am unable to change your mind and that is assembled council, I am required to challenge you to a duel to the death, which I have no chance of winning. So I understand that if I fail in my plead, I won't leave this room alive. But I cannot allow you to make the biggest mistake in the history of our people. The king was visibly agitated. How? How could this be a mistake? Sure, they are strong warriors, but they only have ten systems. We have over five hundred. Do you honestly expect us to lose? No, I do not think the humans could best us, though they might inflict far heavier casualties than you expect. But that isn't the reason for my objection. No. To clarify my reasoning, please let me tell you of a conversation I recently overheard. I was in a tavern waiting for my food and drink, and I saw a human and an Arabian sitting next to each other on the counter quietly talking to each other, until the Arabian out of the blue blurted out, Oh, you humans would no honor if it dragged you out of the goddamn firefight. The human was understandably insulted and, in a very agitated tone, asked him to repeat that humans weren't honorable. While I prepared for the imminent bar fight, the odd avian backed away a bit and claimed that the human misunderstood. That he didn't say that. Quite the opposite, in fact. He then went on to tell the story about how he and his platoon was taken prisoner back in the war with the humans, and when the building they were sheltered in was hit with an earthquake. The human guard didn't just cut their bindings and run off, but helped each other and everyone else in the collapsed building to safety. His fellow soldiers, as well as the POWs. That he even refused to leave the building until it was sure that everyone else was safe. In the process, more than once nearly giving his life. At this point, the human, as well as myself, was quite confused. So the human asked what the ad avian's problem with humans was then. To that, the Ad Avian declared that after the war, he searched for the man that saved his life, only to discover that all that soldier got for his heroic and honorable deed was a piece of metal called a Distinguished Service Cross. He further said that such a low reward for such an honorable action should have been an absolute disgrace for the entire human race. After the human asked how big the reward for the Ad Avian in the same situation would have been, to which he got the answer that the Ad Avian peoples, similar to you, my king, would have given him the land rights to between a quarter and a half of a planet. To that, the human responded with a single number, 328. After a second of silence, he explained that the human Advarian War, which was about a single planet, mind you, 328 human soldiers earned the very same award for similar acts of heroism. He also added that in the same war, 37 soldiers earned a Medal of Honor, an even higher award, and requires an even more heroic act to be earned. When I came home that day, I checked the humans' claims and found them all to be true. Let that sink in. The humans display such honorable acts in such high numbers that what elsewhere would earn them half a planet wouldn't even earn you their highest award for heroism. And if they awarded such acts the same as we do, they would have run out of planets before they'd finished repelling an attack on a single one of them. And 
I'm not sure about you, but I can think of little else less honorable than starting a war against such an honorable race. End of story. Story number two. 25 to 80 milligrams per liter. Written by Warp Mind. Galactic Capital Prison for Nonviolent Offenders half a year ago. The warden leafed through his files and pinched the bridge of his snout. So, uh, this, uh, Hewitt has just been, uh, standing and holding the window bars of his cell for the past year and a half, day in and day out. The guard nodded. Yes, sir. Occasionally, the patrols have spotted him rocking back and forth at his heels, and that's about it. The warden frowned, but he seems otherwise of sound mind. It doesn't appear to be a ruse to be transferred under the mental care. The guard shrugged. Not that we can tell. When approached, he's generally chatty. Asked about news from the outside, events at the academy, that sort of thing. It's not as though telling him about the regular news is going to affect anything. And we can use the opportunity to scan the cell for any contraband while we're at it. The warden leaned back. No metal objects or anything he might fathomly dig through the concrete with. Nothing that he might use as a leverage amplifier. The guard winced. Uh, the footage of Deathworlder inventiveness were uh, carefully considered when his cell was constructed. Smooth stone or plastic surfaces, including the uh, biological facilities built into the cell. Even the sink has no exposed plumbing. Only loose objects that were deemed acceptable was a small plastic vase, holding some local wildflowers. Your predecessor allowed that request as a mental health allowance. He's usually getting fresh flowers every couple of weeks or so, since they don't last forever. And he's rather endeared himself to most of the guards, helping them look over the poddling schoolwork and the like. The warden looked down at the file again. Hmm, yes, chemistry teacher, convicted of manufacturing prohibited compounds on school grounds. No indications of violent tendencies at any point. Hmm, well, uh, let me know the moment anything changes. He's still got six years and change left to serve. Astra Academy, Galactic Capital, almost two years earlier. And that is how humans managed to mass-produce synthetic insulin in the late 1970s by Standard Earth Canada through the manipulation of the bacterium Escherichia coli. With this development, treatment for the disorder called diabetes became far more easily acceptable, and production became significantly cheaper. Now, this will be on the test next week, so make sure you've taken notes. There was a knock on the door, and Greg DeVitt interrupted his lecture. All right, class, discuss amongst yourselves what implications of this technique can be while I see to who that is. He strode over to the door and opened, only to be met with two public sentinels presenting a document to him. Human teacher, Greg DeVitt, you are under arrest on charges of the manufacture and consumption of a controlled and prohibited substance on school grounds. You do not have to speak up now, but legal counsel will be provided. Greg stuttered, but... What, what, what substances? One of the sentinels looked down at a small data pad. The compounds would be known to you as caffeine, theobromine, coumarin, allyl isothiocyanate, and capsaicin. Others are still being identified. Will you come peacefully? Greg stared blankly at him. Coffee, chocolate, and my spice and condiment rack. Are you serious? The sentinel nodded. Deadly serious, teacher. Some of your compounds are narcotics with risks of lethal overdoses to some species. Others are classified as biomechanical weapon components. I'm afraid you'll have to come with us. Greg slouched for a moment. Would you care to wait by the door so that I can dismiss my la classe first? The sentinel nodded and stepped inside the classroom as Greg walked to the podium to the end of the class. The distance I had never seen so long as today. And someone would have to snitch on him. Someone had betrayed him. Someone had betrayed Greg DeVitt, and the aftermath would reveal who. Little prison for non-violent offenders, now. The warden looked into the now-abandoned cell, the bars once blocking the window now quietly lay on the bed, and sighed. How the peaceful human somehow crumpled the concrete wall without anyone noticing for two years and eventually pulled the bars out of the frame, 
only to crawl through a narrow gap and just, uh, run off into the night. The guard stared abashedly at the floor. Yes, sir, um, it seems he used the, the flower vase to, uh, to collect his bodily wastes and, and pour them on the windowsill, and, and then refill the vase with fresh water for the flowers. Um, we still don't know how he could pull that off. The warden grumbled as he started heading back to his office of a place a few calls bloody death wilders, impossibly strong, incredibly durable, unstoppable killing machines. Nobody told me they piss acid. End of story. Just a quick shout out to the T5 peeps. Bob the Dragon, Cat Crab Lobster, Data Magnet, Dark Machine, Mezic, Try Again 95, Feudic Yol, Astraea the Dreamer, Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Athelia, Meridian 117, and Jordan Buxmorm. Thank you very much. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. There are links down below both to support this channel and for the author of this fiction. Anyways, I hope you all have a fantastic one, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.